Welcome back again today, friends. What in the world are we doing here? Well, we are, per our usual, mega cooking massive homemade meals for my family of 11. Only this time, a friend gave me an ostrich egg. So we are, will also be getting into and finally cooking this ostrich egg this week and seeing how that all works out. We're also doing homemade sourdough tortillas, homemade <laughs> sourdough everything throughout the week, plus a lot of other homemade meals. So thank you for joining me today with all of my mega mama cooking. So we have been at the lake all afternoon and I'll show you the snacks that we brought. So I just threw, we had a couple slices of sourdough left and I didn't make any new sourdough today. I will do that tomorrow, but we've eaten several of those slices and we had two bags of peaches and also cherries, some cut watermelon. We've been through two pints of blueberries so far also. Well, hey there friends. I don't know about you, but it's been an evening. It's 8.30, but hey, we're eating. Let me show you how these lasagnas turned out. So this was my first time reheating a gluten-free lasagna freezer meal. Here it is. It is fantastic. The noodles are super. It's that Jovel brand, I believe you say it. And then this is my Mega Mama plate of my cabbage lasagna. Also a freezer meal. I feel like it doesn't look that great, but it tastes great. And that's what matters. And you can see the liquid in there, but I'm not eating that. <laughs> I'm eating this over here on my plate. And it is delicious. Yay, food. And friends, real quick, I just wanna let you know, all of you who've been waiting for me to launch my long time requested Business Mama course that I'm calling Successful Business Mama, where I'm sharing all of the details and all of my knowledge of the last 12 years of building a successful online business. I am sharing with mamas how to build a successful online business from home while also raising their families. And the first edition of that course suite is called Successful Business Mama YouTuber Extraordinaire. That is launching to the world on July 24th. And I have a special exclusive offer only to those who are on my YouTuber Extraordinaire wait list. If you've already signed up for my wait list, that's awesome. If you are not on the wait list, head to largefamilytable.com forward slash business and also click the first link in the description below. Sign up, get on my wait list because I am launching a special 24 hour extravaganza exclusively for my subscribers who are on the special YouTuber Extraordinaire wait list. So again, be sure to click the first link in the description below, sign up for that because I have cooked up all kinds of fun for us, yay. Well, good morning friends. So today is one of my dedicated cooking and all day filming days and I have a live call tonight with my membership with a special Ninja Mom expert guest. So we are just getting rolling. Oatmeal is what was for breakfast. We finished the last of the bulk oatmeal we had made several days ago. I have this ostrich egg <laughs> that I've been wanting to cook. I was planning to do it this morning, but it's just not going to work out because what I have read so far and looked into just on my phone quickly here and there, Looks like I'm gonna need a hammer and a chisel or a hacksaw or a dremel. There's gonna be a lot that goes on in reference to that ostrich egg. So I think wisdom to me now says I better not also try to do that on the day when I'm trying to get a lot of freezer cooking done. Because I feel like the ostrich egg can quickly become a big chunk of my morning. And instead I need to get going on my other projects. But I do plan be doing that here in a couple days. So plans for today food wise is so we have the cabbage lasagna with gluten-free lasagna and I'm going to be doing food all day. Um, I do have two loaves of sourdough bread in the refrigerator. I had forgot because you know, I'm still getting down all my steps with that. Before I put it in the refrigerator, I forgot to roll it over on itself and I forgot to, I just left it in the bowl and covered it. Sorry, mom life there, talking about cups. Um, what I should have done after it did its 
long rise on the counter is then rolled it over on itself and put it like on a little tea cloth or something in a bowl with some flour, dusted it. And this morning I would have been able to take it out, do my cuts, get it in the oven. However, after it rose on the counter all day yesterday and I did my stretch and folds, I didn't forget that. When it was time to put it in the fridge, I just put it in the fridge and I forgot that step. So I did my little fold in it in on itself, which is supposed to just tighten it and help it have a nice rise but I was supposed to do that before the 12 to 15 hours in the refrigerator. You're with me? We're gonna get this though. We are so going to get this, we sure are. Um, so, all that to say, dance around the barn. I did that stuff this morning and I'm leaving it in the fridge for a few hours, but I do plan at some point here in the next hour or so to get my Dutch oven heated up. I should probably do that now. So the directions that I'm following talk about um, letting the Dutch oven heat up at 500 degrees. Oh, I got both racks in here. Well, that's okay. Okay. Letting it heat up at 500 degrees for an hour. Then take the bread out, score the bread, and get it going. Now, whenever I have my Mega Mama side of my oven going again, I'll be able potentially do at least three of those artisan loaves at a time. I can only do one at a time in this side and you can see just because the Dutch oven sits on the rack and there's no room for two but when this oven is back to working again we should be able to fit two nice nice sized Dutch ovens on the top and have one going in here. Z-Line is messing with my Mega Mama cooking haha -ha. I don't know if I told you in this video or not, and I was telling someone the other day, Travis has talked to Z-Line. They have sent the part. We're waiting for them to schedule a technician. Same thing like with our pool that has a hole, hole in it. They came out once, now we're waiting. I hate waiting on people for things like this. It's frustrating. But obviously, I have a working oven. Obviously, I take my kids to the lake with no problem, we'll be okay. We go to the lake even when we have a pool, but all those days, all those days that uh, we don't go to the lake, you know, the kids would be out swimming in the pool. Another thing that we are dealing with here, and I don't know if it's come out in my videos quite yet, but I mean, we all know the forest fires and all that is going into that. I was listening to this morning, M.I. Gardner did a really good live video where he shared his thoughts about the forest fires and just how they're affecting the gardens there. And where I'm at in Virginia, there's many, many states affected. And I mean, smoke's even making it over to the UK at the time that I'm recording this. So just, he was saying it's, it's going to affect people's gardens. It's going to affect food production. It's going to affect fresh produce available in the future. Just. His encouragement, I'll link his video down below, is it's going to affect a lot of things. He still had encouragement on growing gardens, obviously. We just have to expand and grow even more. And I, I feel that, I got it, I'm, I'm listening to that. Um, so, we have had a lot of smoke in our area, a lot of haze. Uh, it started about two weeks ago. We didn't know what we were dealing with, so we were still outside the first couple days by the third or fourth day, we figured out that, okay, this haze and this smoke, we weren't calling it that, the stuff in the air is coming from these forest fires in Canada. And we started to feel the effects in our throat and our nose and our eyes. Um, within a few days of that, all of my kids got very, very sick. We started staying inside but they still got very sick with a respiratory thing. And then a few days after they got better is when I got sick with something that lasted five days or more. So there's just a lot going on with that too. And even yesterday when we went to the lake, our local like community pool was closed because of the air quality. And so it seems like we had a week or so break from the smoke or whatever's in the air. So I had planned for us to just have our normal lake day. 
I didn't know about the pool and I noticed the haze and I was hopeful that when I drove to the other side of the mountain to the lake it would be better. It wasn't as bad as it had been weeks prior, but um, it wasn't great. So everybody's inside a lot so far today. We did go out to do animals. Um, so just sharing, talking about stuff on my head in reference to the smoke and the fires. Food production. Um, I feel like it's all the more important to can freeze dry. I heard from a mom the other day who um, was just asking me, she said with her large family, um, she only has one freezer and that holds the meat and the fruit and the vegetables and they don't have room to have another freezer for any food preservation. What should she do? And so I was just encouraging her to start canning. Start canning fruits, vegetables, meats, get into canning meals, continue. Get in those skills and start working with them. Anyway, that's what I'm working on. And so I'm going to let this just heat up for up to an hour and then my two loaves of bread, I had put back in the refrigerator this morning. I'll see if I can still get those to cook up as the more artisan looking loaves. Also, since it is a big cooking day for me, I am going to do some homemade iced coffee. Right. Well, and I had a sip left of this. Don't worry, I will drink other things, but I just know in a couple hours I'm going to want the iced coffee. So the oven, the Dutch oven are all heated up. We are going to get the first loaf of sourdough. I just had a kiddo ask me if we had any sourdough ready, so it'll be lunchtime before we know it, and I will get these two loaves made and it's been working pretty well using those as um, my sandwich bread for lunch and such. And even though it's thick slice, kids have been learning to slice those thick slices down a little thinner if they would like or to take one of the really thick slices, cut it in half and just make that into like a nice thick sandwich half the size but twice as thick. It's like a fancy deli shop here every day now. getting multiple sourdough things going at one time and I tried to um, get even more starter created so we'll measure this out. And for those of you who follow my timelines and just watched my recent No More Grocery Store Grocery Haul for July and all of my sourdough cooking adventures, this video was obviously filmed a few weeks ago around the week of Independence Day. And as you can tell by my voice, and as I mentioned in this video, in this video we had a respiratory thing going on and then we got about a week or so break. And then this past week when I'm recording this voiceover, it is July 21st this past week I've lost my voice for much of the week. So because I lost my voice for much of the week, I could not record this voiceover. And the recent July local no more grocery store grocery haul where I referenced some of these adventures as, as if you'd seen this video, that video had to fly first. <laughs> so we'll get all caught up here. At this point, I'm about a week into my sourdough journey and I've been continuing to work on times four or times five, many, many of the recipes. And so you'll see here at this point, I am filling about five half cups of starter for several recipes I wanna do that are coming up. We also are going to use starter for sourdough pancakes and sourdough hot dog buns. We are doing so many sourdough adventures in this mega cooking video. 
little top that's much happier. This loaf looks. I don't think they not as big as some of my other loaves. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Don't touch the Saudi Dutch oven there. Uh, but anyway, that's okay. There's still bread. They'll still work. They'll still do the job. And I'm moving my sourdough out of this into a bigger jar because there's so much I want to do with it. And I really need a lot more starter for a lot more yeah. Mega Mama big batch projects. So I'm gonna move ship over here. And Lisa has just encouraged me, if I want more starter, I just need to feed my starter more. And for many recipes, such as big batch sourdough pancakes that rely heavily on starter, of course you add eggs and a few other ingredients to them, but I just need a lot of starter. Now futuristically, we also do sourdough discard pancakes, but look at us go. And so for some almost homemade lunches, haha, -ha, we do have our sourdough, we got some peanut butter and jelly, we have a peach, we have cherries, we have some of our A2 milk, and then here's another plate over here, yummy lunch time. Well, I just finished two big cooking days, and we just got back home from church. It's like I'm try trying to get my mouth working. So we got lots of projects done, other projects in the works, but did have the foresight last evening we pulled out big batch spaghetti sauce and I'm going to get that going with regular noodles and also gluten-free noodles as an option and so this spaghetti sauce I had set out to defrost the day before and that is how I use my freezer meals I'm just warming this up on a low heat I just look at the calendar, I see what's happening for the next couple days, and then I set my meals out accordingly so they are ready to go, but I don't have to actually do any heavy cooking for those coming days, at least those meals in particular, yay. And many of you have been asking what my kids have been having for snacks since I haven't had a lot of convenient snacks around, and we really reverted to, like I did snacks back in my farmhouse days, so it'd be fresh fruits and vegetables tons of homemade yogurt. We are draining off the whey from the yogurt because I'm doing it Greek yogurt style and we're saving that way. I have jars of it in the refrigerator and I have the kids use that in their smoothies. We're also doing a lot of homemade sourdough baked goods and goodies. So we're definitely finding our way, making our way through it. And again, it's so helpful that everybody loves sourdough because anything that you can bake, I can make into sourdough and it's filling and it's nutritious and it's just checking so many boxes for us. So here I am for myself. This is some squash from the garden, yay. And I am slicing this down to saute it for myself. I also am working on working through several gallons of yogurt. Uh, my kids are going through four to six gallons of homemade, grass-fed, A2A2, Greek yogurt every week. Everyone is having at least two big bowls a day. And that could be for breakfast with some toppings and then a snack later. Um, it could be for lunch along with a sandwich. They're just definitely, we've, we've always loved yogurt in all of its forms. And so for me as the home cooking from scratch mama here, that just means I have to stay ahead on doing yogurt. I used to do it a lot in the slow cooker. Of course, back, you know, 15 years ago and more in my farmhouse days, there I didn't have an Instant Pot. I did it always in the slow cooker. So I will link the slow cooker yogurt recipe recipe for you in the description below if you would like and also my instant pot yogurt recipe but I'm just working this instant pot I feel like non-stop uh, keeping us in this nice thick yogurt it's working very well I it's unsweetened it's unflavored and so the kids can add some cane sugar from Azure that we have or they can add some maple syrup they can add some honey we have some different um, organic granola type toppings we also have those chocolate chips yum and so they definitely doctor it up a lot of different ways and so here I've had my sourdough pizza dough 
fermenting and now I am getting it wrapped up and this is the sourdough pizza dough that I'm getting in my freezer for future meals getting that all wrapped up and so I do a layer in plastic wrap and then we're going to wrap it in some foil and so my plan is later whenever we need pizza dough we will take that out a day or two before and no absolutely no problem in setting your freezer meals out in from the freezer into the refrigerator even 48 hours before it can take them depending on temperatures quite a while to defrost and for something like pizza dough i might set it into the refrigerator up to two days before but again that's where i am looking at my calendar we do have a plan for the whole week i know in advance when our appointments are I know what responsibilities are ahead of us. I know, you know, who's visiting and those kind of things for the most part. And so I can plan accordingly that way. Now, of course, the unexpected happens. Um, we've had other things we're dealing with, just like I'm sure your family's had things that you're dealing with that's unexpected. For the most part, that works well for us. And then, of course, if we have extra people show up for a meal or, you know, some unexpected life events that happen, I'm, I just... Hey, I've been a mama 23 years. I know how to go with the flow and be flexible and keep my joy within all of that because every day is a gift and we do, even when things don't go our way, want to make the best of it. So I just scored some more bread and I got that in the oven. Now what I'm doing here is I am working on the gluten-free sourdough loaf. And surprise, surprise, that's my gluten-free starter. It's nice and thick, and I have fed it and it is ready to go. And surprise, surprise, I'm using Lisa's, yes, it's a fan club girl here, uh, but she has so much wisdom in all the things, and especially sourdough. And so I'm using her gluten-free sourdough recipe. Now, I read several others, but again, I liked Lisa's because she made it as plain and simple and easy peasy lemon squeezy like this mama needs. <laughs> so I will link her directions below, but I'll also link a few others that might work well for you. And now I will say beyond this particular gluten-free sourdough recipe, futuristically, I do not go any farther with gluten-free baking at this time. I can see, and I know from some past experiences, gluten-free baking is a whole other thing. You know, it takes a whole other mental compartment just like sourdough does for a busy mom. So we definitely test this loaf and my gluten sensitive people uh, do enjoy it toasted. It did work out well. But I've also found in the last several weeks, I have some folks who I feed who have some different health needs. Again, not celiac and not even gluten intolerance, but based on what they're dealing with in their health under a doctor's recommendation that we have been at one of the dietary changes, hold on here, one of the dietary prescriptions as you will that we have is for them to be low or no gluten as much as possible for reasons that I'm just not able to go into based on their diagnosis and what they're dealing with. And then I also have someone else that I care for that has severe gluten intolerances and sensitivities. However, those people in particular have been handling traditional sourdough fantastically. So as long as that continues, I am putting all of my heavy mama brain efforts into traditional sourdough because I know it's good for gut health. I know it is not gluten free, but a lot of the gluten is broken down and you can do longer fermentation, which breaks it down further. And for some people with certain diagnosis and gluten needs, and for some people with gluten sensitivities, they can enjoy the health benefits of sourdough and traditional sourdough does not affect them. Not the same for celiac disease, not the same for other situations. There's a lot to take into consideration, but you're here watching my food and my mama adventures, so I'm just trying to share with you a little further. Um, we are now working on another sourdough recipe here that I'm cracking an egg for. We're getting some more dough ready on this day that needs to prep and ferment for the following day. And this is actually going to be the dough for the homemade sourdough hot dog buns. So that is a fun adventure. It's the first time I've ever done hot dog buns. I've also done 
homemade sourdough hamburger buns. So we're just rolling through all the sourdough fun and my KitchenAid is really helping me through a lot of this and I appreciate that KitchenAid. And here's how the gluten-free sourdough loaf turned out. And here I'm continuing to get different batches of the sourdough hot dog bun mix uh, ready and fermenting and going through its process. I do a times three batch. Oh, and there's some more beautiful bread. Surprise, surprise. I do a times three batch because, well, I know these sourdough hot dog buns are going to be a hit and I know I need to make a lot and no, I don't end up with a ton of leftovers. We do end up with, you know, a handful of buns, maybe four or five for the following day that people use. But if I make 36 hot dog buns, um, it does not mean that that's a week's worth of hot dog buns, you know, because there's a lot of people here. <laughs> I also want to mention to so many of you, I know you've been waiting for my Successful Business Mama course to come out and waiting for updates, and so I'll give you a quick update on that. I got Successful Business Mama three quarters of the way done, and I shared in it so much of what I have learned being self-taught and in investing in knowledge in different areas and all of my experiences in growing and developing a super successful online business over the last 12 years that brought my husband home full time several years before I even started on YouTube. Of course, a lot of things changed. I have uh, part of my business. I sold a very successful blog and got the equity out of that and invested in other areas. So uh, mom has been moving and shaking and <laughs> doing a lot of things. And I've been very blessed to with our keep our priorities in place and our priorities that Travis and I decided decades ago is that I wanted to be home with the children and we wanted to be able to continue to homeschool all of them throughout their educational journey. And developing my online business has actually allowed both of us for over the past 10 years to be home full time and working together and doing all the things. So the feedback I got from my Successful Business Mama course as far as I got with it was really telling me that I was going to overwhelm people. Would you believe that I, well, you know, I do mega and lots everything and I just gave it my all. I shared mega and lots and it was so, so much. The professional feedback and then also some friends who looked at it for me just said, my goodness, it's going to be too much for you to teach people how to grow and start a successful blog, how to grow and start a successful membership, how to do a Shopify store, how to grow an email list to over 100,000, how to start and grow a successful YouTube channel, how to do brand deals, how to do professional speaking, how to do all these things in one course is way too much. And they encouraged me that I must pare down. So that is what I've been working on. So what I am doing is I have created the Successful Business Mama product suite. And by the way here, we are working on scooping out and getting ready our sourdough chocolate chip cookies, which let me tell you, there's none of these left for the following day. But the kids are super, super excited about mama getting into sourdough cookies. So anyway, I'm doing the Successful Business Mama product suite where I'm breaking all the topics down into in-depth individual courses. So finally, ring the gong, I am getting ready to launch on July 24th, Successful Business Mama YouTuber Extraordinaire Edition. And what that means is this is my signature deep dive course to teach mamas how to grow and start and create their own dream YouTube business. And I have a very special offer for all of those who have signed up and are on the wait list. So click the first link in the description below, go to largefamilytable.com forward slash business. Join the wait list now because on Sunday, July 23rd, those who are on the wait list are going to get an exclusive Super Mega Mama deal that will be deeply discounted to wait list mamas only. So be sure to click that first link in the description below and get on my successful Business Mama YouTuber extraordinaire wait list where I will be teaching. It's going to be amazing. So much information is coming out on that. I just can't wait to share it all. But in the meantime, the big thing I need for you to do today is to click the first link, join the wait list, and check your email on Sunday, July 23rd, because for 24 hours only, my wait list subscribers only are going to get a super mega amazing deal 
before YouTuber Extraordinaire is open to the public. I cannot wait to do this with you. And so here I am continuing to big batch bake bread. I had 10 loaves prepped that I wanted to do in advance. I was planning to freeze some and then slice several down and leave them for fresh eating. My family's been going through two of these artisan loaves a day. And then also I was doing that gluten-free loaf ahead. I was trying to get ahead on this for days where I may not be able to bake the bread fresh. Figure if I have four loaves in my refrigerator, that will give us up to two days ready to go. And then if I can get three or four loaves in my freezer, that gives me a little, little backup situation there, which is always good. At this point, I am still operating on just one oven, but I can also report from the future that not long after I filmed all of this, Z-Line did finally get a technician out here. Again, it's been months, but they did get a technician out here and the Mega Mama second large oven is working. So futuristically, we are finally back to two ovens. Good thing that we had all those years using the little oven in the baby kitchen. So you can see, uh, one loaf demolished, the other loaf only a little bit left all of this now what do we have left here so that was two four six eight nine so we did nine loaves of sourdough here's our last one that turned out so pretty i just i love it all it's like the song i don't have a problem i don't have a problem right okay anyway so i'm going to hmm I haven't decided my number. I need to bag up, I guess, three or four of these loaves. We're easily going through two a day. And this was just like afternoon snacking with some butter. That wasn't even lunch. Maybe I'll save out four and then we'll get three in the freezer. And that will at least help us get ahead of the homemade sourdough bread as our bread game. I also have the gluten-free sourdough that I'm just gonna let ferment on the countertop pretty much until bedtime. And then I'll put that in the fridge overnight. We'll cook that tomorrow. And then we have our hot dog buns here that have just been liking it all day. Um, it does say in the directions to get them rolled out, shaped into buns and then cover them and let them double in size. I'm hoping that won't take too long because we're also trying to do our first of three big Independence Day events tonight. We're doing a fire pit and home store-bought fireworks here. So, then we have other adventures coming other days. So I'm gonna get these buns made, let them hopefully double fairly quickly. I mean, they can take an hour or so if they'd like, but, I will then go ahead and get the chocolate chip cookies in the oven because that will make people happy. Mm -hmm. So accidentally, I just had someone bring me up um, the cookies and what I had said, what I thought I said, well, what I say a lot is put this in the freezer. What I thought I said with the cookies was put these in the refrigerator, but the cookies were put in the freezer, which freezer cookie dough is totally fine. You know, we love that around here. It's just these cookies were supposed to ferment for a little bit for a couple hours in the refrigerator. Lisa says in her directions that um, 12 to 24 hours she really loves, but my plan was, well, mine might only get six hours or so, but that's okay. So they've been in the freezer. I don't know what that will do in reference to the sourdough, but we're cooking them now and I'm sure they're gonna taste delicious. 
And so here I am dividing out the hot dog buns in our triple batch. And I'm supposed to be able to get about eight or so hot dog buns from each roll of the hot dog bun sourdough that we prepped. So that must mean that we, instead of 36, we must have gotten about 24 or so. I just, you know, all these people, I just try to make as much food as possible all the time. And so I'm rolling out, Lisa's directions say to roll these out as, you know, as I think into a rectangle is what she had said. Um, and kind of tuck the eggs in, make it look like a hot dog bun. And so that's definitely what I'm attempting to do here. I do end up with a few in different sizes, but I think each time I make these, it'll get better and better. Honestly, to me, they tasted very much like a corn dog. And I believe that's because of the honey in them. They were delicious. Having a hot dog on them, yeah, it just tasted like a corn dog. And I know that that is cornbread. It just had a, a bit of that cornbread flavor. But again, I think it was the sweetness that I was picking up. And it was so delicious. And as you see here, I'm eating wonderful sourdough yet again. So finally, by this point in my sourdough journey, I have learned to get my electric bread knife out and I'm able to slice down these sourdough loaves even thinner, so it works well. Everyone's been great sports about cutting down thicker slices of sourdough, but we look, we're taking it up a notch, and so I am putting each loaf into a gallon Ziploc bag. Now, I do, yes, yes, yummy, mama, we know it's yummy. <laughs> I do um, futuristically get out my Rubbermaid container with the red lid, and I'm able to put about three sliced down loaves of sourdough in there and we just use that and then replenish it and that has been working well as well and I'm just uh, updating and <laughs> making sure I'm using my electric knife carefully. I do make myself unplug it before I work on adjusting the blades because yeah, we don't need that adventure. And so I'm cutting through, I'm getting the slices, I'm doing thinner slices where I can and I just can't say enough how much my family loves it. So these are what's left. Everyone has already had three or four cookies each. Here I am getting the hot dog buns. Again, we have to have to do these batches in this baby oven at this point, but I'm getting the hot dog buns in the oven. And now I am wrapping up some more of the sourdough for the freezer. I just leave that sourdough on its parchment paper because, hey, that's definitely not gonna hurt anything. And then I am wrapping it in a layer of foil and then I'm labeling the foil so we will have that in the freezer ready to go in the future and as always my future family future selves will thank me and here's everything that's getting in the freezer so I'm getting five bags of sourdough sliced down that's three traditional sourdough one gluten-free sourdough in the refrigerator and then that was three loaves of bread and then the 16 enough dough for 16 personal pan pizzas here is how our big batch quadruple batch sourdough hot dog buns turned out and now we're going to go outside enjoy our fire pit and our homemade small fireworks but bigger fireworks are coming in coming days several things happening today it's independence day here in america and we have a lot of fun activities today and we have that gluten-free bread that has been doing the long ferment in the refrigerator and so I'm going to get that baking. So that is to try, and I know many of you wanted me to test it out. So I'm getting my Dutch oven heating up. And for breakfast this morning, I'm doing sourdough pancakes. Like I say, all the, the sourdough schooling going on, and this is how I learn. I immerse myself in a topic and I get as much experience with it as possible and hopefully at some point later this summer I'm going to start going through all of my big batch baking recipes. I have two baking products over in my shop. They've been there for years now. They're called Frugal Baking from Scratch. I have a guide one and a guide two. But again, I'm learning that so many of these recipes can be converted to sourdough. So I'm excited about that because I have many favorites. And I also have in many of my freezer cooking guides, I have a lot of bread recipes that I have tested over the years. 
that are tried and true as far as prepping them and then freezing them and baking them for later. I know I've shared my freezer biscuits for years, even though again, I think probably it's been two years since I've done a big batch of freezer biscuits at this house. But in all the years in YouTube footage, I've done a lot of big batch freezer biscuits and they are super convenient. And I've also done a lot of big batch frozen pizza dough and that is super convenient. And now we also have sourdough pizza dough in the freezer, prepped and ready to go for 18 personal pizzas. So that's very helpful because in five or six days, we have another birthday party extravaganza. So I'm going to get out, let's see, how many will I have? I'll probably have 15 people. So I guess we prepped, we prepped ahead. We're ready to go for the birthday party. Or depending on my timing this weekend, and just like life in general, I might leave those pizza doughs, <laughs> pizza doughs, sorry, it just sounded silly. Uh, I might leave those in the freezer and I might be able to prep ahead and do the sourdough pizza dough for this weekend fresh. I really like to save my freezer meals for when I really need it, which would you believe that as a mom of nine with eight at home, but seven, I only, 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 I only have seven kids at home that are under my wing, <laughs> ages two through 16, only seven kids. Would you believe that between that and homeschooling and working full time and home life and projects, would you believe that I need freezer meals that are convenient and ready to go and that's why I've been doing them? for two decades now, who'd have thought it? Anyway, I'm being silly this morning. First cup of coffee hasn't kicked in. So just saying, I might leave that dough in the freezer because Saturday I might be able to get pizza dough prepped and ready for our birthday party Sunday. Okay, so we have our gluten-free sourdough that we prepped yesterday. It sat out on the counter for 12 hours and then it's been in the fridge overnight, so now, Per the directions, it's gonna sit out on the counter here for about an hour while this Dutch oven heats for an hour. I have never done a lot of baking in Dutch ovens before, so this is also new for me. So this is a fun experience. You know, when you've been cooking for decades as a middle-aged mama, it's like, oh, new things. So I've done a lot of Dutch ovens on the stove, <laughs> stove top, but the Dutch oven is going to heat at 425 for an hour. And again, I will link the recipe down below. I am yet again using my friend Lisa's recipe over from Farmhouse on Boone. There's other, if you Google gluten-free sourdough, there's so many recipes. But what I like about Lisa's is even though she will have the grams for those who are being proper and weighing their ingredients, she'll still have the cups and those conversions. I need that right now. I am not weighing any of this baking. And I can tell definitely when I do things like, you know, eight loaves of sourdough at one time and I can see the differences in all my different loaves. I'll say out of those eight I did yesterday, I had five that turned out just beautiful, like little mama works of art. And then I had Three that were kind of questionable, still edible. They didn't have a lot of uh, the same spring and I could just tell that there were some differences. And I bet you, if I went to weighing my ingredients for my sourdough, that I will get more consistency in this baking. But I'm just telling you, it's like, Jamerel, how do you do all these things? Well, I just, it's slow and gentle entries, okay? Just a little bit here, a little bit there. I know I don't wanna add in that layer right now of weighing my baking. Will I be doing that in a few weeks or later this summer? Potentially, but right now that's not my goal. Right now my goal is to learn the sourdough skills and to get my family eating mainly homemade sourdough for the bulk of our bread products. And today, we're gonna test out this gluten-free sourdough. Again, in her recipe, you'll see it says, you know, it doesn't rise the same as the traditional sourdough, but there's a lot that can be done with it. And 
for those who need gluten-free and want the benefits of sourdough, this is definitely something to research and look into. And as I'm stirring my sourdough this morning, put in a Walmart order. Now again, I'm not being legalistic about this. I went into Walmart two days ago with one of my kiddos because uh, mama needed some new undergarments. And do you know, ladies, I don't know about you, but do you ever get to the point where like you only have one bra? <laughs> you know, uh, womanhood problems. So I was like, I've got, I, so I'm not boycotting going into the big stores and getting household items that we need. Again, I'm just, I'm trying to get off going there for food. But yet today. Okay, so you know, I had to, maybe a week or so ago, I needed to get gluten-free flour to do this gluten-free baking. Okay, so there's that. But then today, Independence Day plans, we are going to the lake, and then we're going to a big outdoor party at a park. It's gonna have music and food trucks and stuff, and our fun Independence Day treat. I, Cause I can't drive the kids an hour to the lake they have fireworks there at the fairgrounds, but the lake closes at one time and like three hours later is the fireworks. So during, and we're not gonna drive an hour home to eat and another hour back. That'd be four hours of driving for this Independence Day fun. So we're gonna stay in that town. We're gonna do their 4th of July evening activities, which is live music in this beautiful nature setting and food trucks for dinner, okay. And I know before we go to the lake, we still have, uh, let's see, last night, you know, we did the, um, we did a fire pit and we did home fireworks and homemade hot dog buns and all that. But actually we still have some leftover spaghetti sauce from the day before. And of course we didn't eat that yesterday as we normally would because we were doing other Independence Day celebration things. It's not like a ton left, but it's enough for everyone to have a serving for lunch. So we're going to have that spaghetti today and some fruit before we leave. But then I got an hour drive and I'm gonna have kids swimming for four hours. And so I need to bring some snacks, right? Last time we went, we had a lot of fresh cherries and blueberries. Now those cherries and blueberries now are gonna be made into jam with what's left. And that project is coming up in a few days, but they're not really take them to the lake and have as snacks ready. So I needed something and I thought, okay, well here's a situation where mama's gonna have to do a little Walmart order, or I'm going to have to bake muffins or something like that to take with us. Of course, I do have the sourdough bread that's made, but I was thinking like quick snack when you run in and out of the water, because we all know how starving kids get whenever they're swimming. My gift to myself today is after I make homemade sourdough pancakes, I'm gonna go outside and I'm gonna work in my garden for a few hours because it's actually not scorching hot today. It's gonna to be like in the 70s this morning, which is nice, I mean, it's not the 90s, and uh, mid 80s throughout the day. So since we're not gonna leave for the lake until after lunchtime, I wanna get out in my garden and work. You know, I mean, I have two to three hours slated on my little schedule, but even if I only truly, because I am a real life mama, I might only get an hour of that. I still wanna get that time in. So instead of baking or doing any other snack prep for my family, drum roll please, we're picking up bananas and two boxes of granola bars and also some gluten-free granola bars. Did I put in some organic apples? There were not good reviews on Walmart's organic apples, uh, but I'm giving it a try. I looked, my local, general store here in town. Um, they don't have bananas right now. There's really convenient lake snacks. Um, they do have nectarines and grapes, but then I was thinking, well, I can't get the grapes home to really soak and wash them. So anyway, just as an example of me doing a little thing from Walmart, hey, it's not a big feeding 11 or 100 people grocery haul, but I am picking up bananas and granola bars this afternoon. So I got my three stovetop griddle situation set up here. 
So here are my three griddles ready to go and we are doing homemade from scratch sourdough pancakes for the very first time. Okay, I just had to Google this. How many quail eggs equal one chicken egg? Details coming. All right, so we got a lot of noise and fun happening in here. Now I made two batches exactly how Lisa's recipe says and I got about a dozen pancakes with each batch. It takes two eggs per each batch. I only had seven eggs. Don't worry, cooking the ostrich egg is coming, but that thing's gonna need a, a sledgehammer or a, a saw, a drill, a chisel. We just, holidays and stuff. Have not had the time to put into that. Right now, it keeps moving to my calendar every day, so now it has moved to my calendar to tomorrow morning, so we'll see but that is not an egg I can use for breakfast this morning. So what I did is I doubled Lisa's recipe. So it's this recipe here, so we're gonna test it out. Hey Lisa, we're just doing this big batch for you, right? Super Mega Mama style. I doubled it, we'll see if we can get about 24 or so pancakes, and since I only had one egg left for my third batch, and now I have made this into batch three and four, Three quail eggs equal one chicken egg. You following all this? Her recipe originally calls for two eggs per batch, but we're doing a double batch. Yes, yes, follow, follow, check, check, double check. Okay, so this has three chicken eggs, three quail eggs. All I've done is doubled her ingredients. Now we're gonna get cooking. And I have one stack here waiting for somebody. I think I need two more stacks. And because I am who I am, I'm also trying to get some more pancakes ahead here. Yes, ostrich egg tomorrow morning, but we can have ostrich eggs and pancakes, yay. And that was plural, there's not ostrich eggs. <laughs> ostrich egg. But this is an example in how, in attempting to do sourdough for a large family, me feeding my starters and getting a lot ahead, because this recipe is only the, you're not adding other flour to it, it's only starter. So that's why I've been feeding this up and now we're empty. I'll get that going again, but I've needed all of that starter to do things such as these big batch pancakes. So when I'm done with four batches, I should have made at least 48 pancakes. So, so far this recipe is cooking up fantastic other than I might leave it a second too long. In Lisa's direction, she talks about only flipping once and having the griddle nice and hot with the coconut oil ready to go. But again, I've run into no issues whatsoever. They are gobbling them up. So by my quail egg math, we got one chicken egg, two, three, four, five. So if we need two eggs for each batch, that means we have enough for two and a half batches and I'm gonna go for it. This is all that's left of the double, double batch. So if I'm really trying to cook ahead for breakfast for a few days, um, while I have the mess out, all this good extravaganza, I'm gonna go for it keep on cooking and get this finished up. So I'm doing my mega mama meal prep ahead here, doing two more batches of pancakes for the refrigerator while I have the mess out, while I have the bowls out, while I have all this carrying on on the countertops. It makes much more sense in my world. And hey, these quail eggs, three at a time, equaling one chicken egg, they're definitely doing their job. I've got a whole saga with my chickens and chicken eggs and just the amount I actually need for my family every day. Yeah, it's a thing. It's a thing that I'll spare you right now, but we definitely, we have a lot of meat birds. Well, here I am talking about it. We have a lot of meat birds growing that we'll be processing and I have about 12 laying hens 
I also have quite a bit of pullets, but they have not started laying yet. And so because of that, I'm just not getting, you know, I need dozens of eggs a day to keep up with all my baking plus feeding my family. And so these little quail eggs that we happen to have in the refrigerator, we bought them as a novelty for fun for the kids to try at our local small town general store. They definitely helped me fill my little egg gap here in my egg saga so I could still keep baking these batches. The super mega mama ostrich egg is definitely coming up soon too. And this batter mixes up very thick. It's very nice. And again, my kids gobbled up two batches of pancakes that morning. I showed you we had just a little bit left. So I knew I needed to do at least two batches for the following morning. And maybe that means we would have just a few servings, not for everybody though, for the following day. So this is a two and a half times batch. All those nice little bubbles popping for us there. Alrighty, so got the gluten-free bread going in the oven. And even now, I'm I'm only using this griddle. So here's my little griddle review for you. This lodge cast iron griddle, and I know my pancakes look a little wonky. I don't know why. That's okay. We'll see how they cook up. Time will tell, right? This Lodge cast iron griddle, I got at the farmhouse, okay? Probably timeline, such a long timeline. <laughs> at least 15 years ago. Let's see, my oldest son is 23, maybe 17 years ago. I've had this griddle for a while. Now it has the, the actual griddle side, okay? Uh, and then it has this flat top side. Don't do what I'm telling you I did, okay? But at the farmhouse, all I had was the glass top stove. That was pretty standard then. It was the stove that came with the house. Eventually, I cracked that stove because I had a piece of cast iron fall from on top of my refrigerator onto the stove. Heart attack, okay. Because then it fell on the floor and my baby wasn't home then, but if he would have been there, that's right where he played. All the heart attack mom stuff. How did we get here from talking about a griddle? <laughs> you dance around the bar with me, right? Another little tip, tip from Mega Mama here. That's why I'm always cautious about putting stuff on the refrigerator and making sure it is scooched back. It was just such a weird, random, like it didn't look like it was hanging. Okay, we won't do that anymore. We'll, we'll continue. I used to use this griddle on that flat top stove. When we went to replace that stove, it was another glass stove because I was still learning about cooking with cast iron and all those things. And I mean, I'm, I'm still learning all the time. We're all, always gonna be learning things. Anywho, I used this and all my cast iron on that stove and it did scratch it and there's all kinds of risk and things in doing that. But you know, we learn. So anyway, on gas, this is fantastic. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get two more of these. I'll look at the price again here on Amazon. They are not near as expensive as these or this one that came with this Z-Line. You know, me and Z-Line, we're about to go round <laughs> with this oven. Uh, besides that, this stove came with, let's see if I can get this. Okay. It came with this. Now it has the, can you see it? Okay, it has the ridges in it. We've done meat on this on a small scale. And it has this back, which you would think means it could flip and be a flat top. I have read where it's supposed to be. I can't point you to that reference, but that was my impression when I bought this stove, that I'd be able to flip this puppy around. Well, there's not enough airflow. When you flip this around, this sits right on the burners. It's not enough airflow. It does not work right flipped. Okay, so I got a whole nice little uh, tote here of pancakes. These will be breakfast for tomorrow, and I'm gonna stick a little note on them so folks know not to eat them today. Alrighty, 
so here's the gluten-free bread when it is done. Now, Lisa does say over on her recipe tutorial that this bread is best when it is sliced and when it is toasted. So, note that also. I'll link a bunch of other gluten-free bread recipes that I've been reading through. I haven't tried them all yet, but I do know several of you have messaged me, emailed me, just wanted to know the gluten-free bread making side of my journey. This is how far we have gotten so far, but I will link you a variety of helps below. Okay, it's only gonna be an hour now until we leave, but I'm gonna set my timer for an hour and go work in the garden until time to go. So we have had so much rain. The garden needs some good attention, which like I said, gonna give it an hour's worth and I have a whole day end of this week. And when I say whole day, that's in and around mom life. So if I have, you know, Friday where I can work on the garden all day, doesn't mean I'm really gonna be able to be out here for 12 hours, but I could get four hours here and there throughout that time, potentially. But here's how the dahlias are doing. Look at that. Wow, so many beautiful things happening here. I'm gonna do a detailed garden tour coming up. But man, look at that. There's the size of my hand. So worth it <laughs> to plant dahlias. Okay, so worked for an hour. We got our little humble garlic harvest. Now, we had two eight by four beds planted with garlic by my early teen boys uh, last fall when I was down with my back injury. And this is our harvest from that. I am glad to have any kind of harvest because this is our first time we have planted and, cr and grown <laughs> garlic. So we did it. Obvious goals for next year is, okay, Large family style, we need at least 20 times that amount of garlic, don't we? But look at this. First dahlia bouquet of the year. These are what we call Daniel's dahlias. He put this together. Isn't that beautiful? And there's some mullen in there also. They are huge. Love them. We'll get those in the kitchen. And then we have some banana peppers and we have six Italian striped zucchinis. So this is our very first garden harvest of 2023. And here's our first big night of big fireworks for Independence Day in a local small town. And now, next day, and Mama is getting dinner ready in the morning, going in the slow cooker. So for lunch today, so we have, you may remember a few days ago, I made these hard boiled eggs. And we have, very sadly, we have a case of strep throat going on. And my big egg fan that probably would have eaten half of these, has not been able to suck eggs down as readily as normal, plus we've had a big holiday. So all that to say, we're still gonna use up these eggs, we're just making them into egg salad for lunch and we will have that on toasted sourdough bread, of course. So we got our sourdough ready to go, ready to be toasted for lunch sandwiches. And now here we are finally doing it. I am doing homemade sourdough tortillas for the very first time. Now I was serving tacos basically for 15 on this evening before we go out to our third day of Independence Day celebrations, our second night of the big small town fireworks. And so we were having dinner before we go, but we did plan, we have a friend who has a local gourmet cotton candy business. So our plan was that evening, we was gonna get a treat of gourmet cotton candy, a little tub for each of the kiddos. And so here I am again, following Lisa's directions. I believe it was that I would get 12 tortillas from each mound of tortilla dough. And I did multiple, multiple batches just trying to have enough homemade sourdough tortillas for 15 people for this night. And then also in my head thinking, maybe I would have a few extra, ha ha. And so I'm rolling them out the best that I can. 
and then I'm getting them on the griddle. I will say rolling them out was a very tedious process. I feel like it took me about an hour and a half to do all of them, so I'm not complaining, but I am saying that by the end of this, I did go on Amazon and I was looking at cast iron tortilla presses. The feedback that I had a handful of viewers share in the comments of my recent No More Grocery Store July grocery haul, or I'll link in the description, Several folks have told me that our tortilla press is only for corn tortillas, and that makes me sad. But I did have some viewers also comment that they have had success in using it for some variations of flour tortillas. So I don't know how the tortilla press will do with sourdough tortillas. I do know part of the um, concern that viewers shared on why flour tortillas won't work in the cast iron tortilla press is because of the gluten, they said. Um, I forget how they explained it, but the gluten pulls and it won't press out properly. But I know with sourdough, especially the longer I ferment, the more of the gluten that's broken down, maybe none of these things matter, but I definitely want to give it a go because I love doing homemade tortillas, but I'm not just rolling out homemade tortillas for three or four people. I'm rolling out homemade tortillas for 15 and mama needs some help so if there's another way if there's another product out there that would also help me do my sourdough tortillas if the tortilla press experiment that we're going to do in the future here does not work what else do you smart genius people have for me because there's got to be something out there and i don't know maybe i'm just gonna have to you know get some strong-armed teenagers out here one Saturday on one of my big batch cooking days and just have them roll out super mega batches of tortillas for mama and uh, mama can pay them a few extra elbow grease bucks and then they will have good healthy tortillas um, ready to go. Now I know I freeze other tortillas. I don't know why I couldn't freeze sourdough tortillas. We'll, we'll see. It's a process. Thanks for working through it with me. Alrighty, so we are going to go to the garden and get some lettuce. Mama, for sure, it's in my Amazon cart right now. I didn't hit buy, but tonight, before I, my head hits a pillow tonight, I'm ordering myself a tortilla press. Wow, those sourdough tortillas are gonna be amazing. I'm gonna explain to the kids that I kind of think of them like a chalupa, because I, I tried to get them as thin as I could. You will have all kinds of tips for me in the comments, but that took an hour and a half. <laughs> so, did it. Want my t-shirt, want my gold star pin, and uh, I'm ordering a tortilla press because I love being able to do that at home, especially with sourdough. Sourdough school, all the things for sure, but I do need a tortilla press. <laughs> Here's how the garden is looking this evening while we're out here. Looking so lush, yes. Okay, I'm gonna take this variety of lettuce in and wash it up. Also, for something fun, got some nasturtiums in here. I have never eaten a nasturtium. My mom started growing them as flowers when I was, uh, I think about nine years old. Sorry, distracted by tomatoes are coming. Exciting, look over here. Got a bunch down there, down there. My neck shirt should say easily distracted by tomatoes. Anyway, we've always grown nasturtiums as flowers, but I'm gonna offer up some nasturtium leaves. Maybe some kids will think that's cool, or maybe it'll just be something wild mama does. And I have a dinner for 15 tonight. And here's how our homemade sourdough taco inspired dinner worked out. I was using, I used a bag of the taco meat that we pre-cooked prior in a big batch cooking day and we froze it. We had our beautiful rolled out homemade sourdough tortillas and our garden fresh lettuce and all the fixings. Okay, so I'm Googling, I'm Googling about opening an ostrich egg to remind myself what I read about it a week ago. So ehow.com is saying that we need to create a line of weakness. So ehow.com, I'll link the article below, haha. -ha. It was talking about how we need to put the egg on like a wet cloth, use a hacksaw or hammer and chisel. This is washed Mr. Travis tools. Make a crack all the way around and then crack it in a bowl. Sounds easy. I don't know. I don't know how it's gonna go, so let's give this a try. Actually, Travis just shared with me a video from Fire Kitchen 
called the best fried egg in the world. I'll also link that down below. And in that, of course, the guy has a handmade hatchet looking thing. Is that how you would describe it? He has a, a nice tool, but he goes around and makes cracks up here at the top, gets the first layer of shell off, peels off the next layer of the egg, and then he has the whole egg that can be poured out. So I'm going, instead of, I was thinking, but now I don't know why I was thinking, well, it's because that's what a lot of the articles have said, to do a crack like all the way around the middle. But I'm gonna go for the top and see, see what we can work out there. He obviously has had a lot of experience cracking ostrich eggs, where this is my first one. So, we'll see. His, what, ooh, ooh, his wasn't that big of a hole. You have a screwdriver for me? Good. I can't, it's really thick. I can't just, I couldn't get it loose. Actually not as hard as I thought it would be to get into. I don't think his hole was any bigger than that. Okay. Alrighty, so it is done. So the yolk did crack or pop a little bit there when it came out of the shell. But man, that, that was great, we did it. You know, I've put off cooking this for days and days and days because I just kept reading and hearing about how hard the shell was to get into. But in less than 30 seconds we were in, it was totally just one of those things that was bigger in my mind than I thought it was going to be. And we did it. So now, what am I gonna do? Well. I'm gonna treat this like scrambled eggs. I'm gonna go ahead and put some milk and some salt and pepper in here, and we're gonna cook this in uh, the 17 inch cast iron lodge pan. I did just realize no milk, no milk right now. So we're not gonna run to the store for that, that's okay. I am gonna hit this with a lot of butter though, because I've read a lot of reviews on ostrich eggs over the past week, so we're just gonna like whole stick of butter it, bunch of salt and pepper, make the best of this ostrich egg. So there's the whole ostrich egg sitting in the kitchen window. I guess not the decoration you always see in a country window, you know, mama's ostrich egg, but hey, we have one. And I did, of course, wash the ostrich egg out uh, with some hot soapy water before I put it in my window. And so now I am just oiling down my cast iron pan there, getting it ready to cook the ostrich egg. Actually, I had just washed both cast iron pans. I was only using one egg, one, one egg, yeah, one pan for the ostrich egg, and the other pan I was just oiling and having it sit and be ready for future upcoming mega cooking. And so now our pan is sparkling and ready to go. Also, I only have like a quarter of a stick of butter left, and that's dirty because pancakes for breakfast. So we're gonna be using quite a bit of bacon grease to doctor up this ostrich egg. And so I am melting down the little bit of butter that I have and getting my pan heated up. And here we go. We are now pouring in the full ostrich egg. And I have read that one ostrich egg is the equivalent of 24 to 28 chicken eggs. And you know that I'll cook three or four dozen eggs together at a time, no problem. 
and uh, my egg videos always get, you know, a lot of commentary on, on these internets, internet roads here. Uh, but anyway, that's okay. Mama cooks a lot of eggs, and so I'm adding some ground up pink Himalayan salt to the ostrich egg, and I'm also liberally applying the pepper, and we're just trying to slow and steady cook it up. I did turn my heat down on low, and I had figured that we would be doing a scrambled egg version with this ostrich egg. I had watched some videos of folks cooking an ostrich egg like a fried egg, and it took over an hour and a half to cook through. And then I also um, watched someone boil an ostrich egg, and I believe it took two hours to boil it and cook it all the way through. So for this mega mama here doing this uh, fun experiment, Definitely just doing an ostrich egg scramble was my best course of action. And like I shared, I had really built up in my head. I had really built up in my head how hard it was going to be to get into that ostrich egg shell. And now, based on my experience, I feel like it wasn't that hard. Now, yeah, I had a hammer. I didn't use the little chisel. Uh, but just doing it on the top, I was able to get into it. So this is definitely different. I mean, the textures looks different. I don't know what it's going to taste like. It has these, um, I mean, not the yolk, but the white, the egg white, kind of cooked in these chunks. It seems like it's more rubbery. We're going to put it out in something so I can pick at it some. Okay, so I'm going to take a bite of this. Um, I'm nervous. The part that kind of weirds me out in my mind a little bit. And I think most of this is just because I've read so much <laughs> the past week over about ostrich eggs. Um, I'm gonna see if I can get a piece to show you. See like the white translucent pieces there? Um, there's no odd smell. It's not bad. It doesn't taste very eggy. I would almost say it's tasteless, which doesn't line up with a lot of the reviews that I've read, but we did doctor it up quite a bit with the fourth of the stick of butter and then two big heaping spoonfuls of bacon grease and of course salt and pepper. Um, I think this is just fine. Now, I don't know that all my family is going to eat this. Uh, it could end up being protein for my chickens or they might, I just don't know. I'm, they've watched me do this. I'm gonna offer it up. We'll see how it goes. So far I have heard back from one kiddo that it just is kind of tasteless, but maybe it's kind of like a regular egg. I think my hesitation is I was expecting a very strong, distinct flavor I had never experienced before. And that's definitely not the case here with, again, I think the bacon grease helped. <laughs> and I was really expecting like a pugnant taste <laughs> but again it's very very much flavorless except for that little little hint of bacon grease so actually all my kids ate it no one complained the next day I had kids asking hey is there any more of that ostrich egg left so it was not it was not given to chickens for protein <laughs> it was definitely consumed at our house and it was very much enjoyed so thank you so much to my friends at the local john henry general store who gifted me this ostrich egg out of nowhere one of the times i was in there in late june and we cooked it up now an ostrich egg i believe it the value is about a 30 dollar value and so obviously if you compare that to even buying 24 or 28 chicken eggs it's not a cost savings but it's definitely Definitely a novelty item but it was definitely a fun novelty thing to cook up even though I made it a bigger deal in my head we did it I'm proud of us something new and something challenging you know a lot of things I've read online cooking an ostrich egg and even get it into it is challenging but look at us in our sourdough summer we're just doing all the new things also friends do not forget to click the first link in the description below and head over to largefamilytable.com forward slash business to join my special exclusive YouTuber extraordinaire wait list for my brand new successful business mama YouTuber extraordinaire edition course that is launching to the world yay on Monday July 24th however if you can click that first link and join my wait list 
today, like right now at this moment, all of my subscribers on my wait list are getting an exclusive, super mega deep dive discount deal that is only available to waitlist subscribers on Sunday, July 23rd. And it's gonna only be available for 24 hours. So be sure to click the first link in the description below and sign up now for that YouTuber extraordinaire edition. So many great details and amazing things coming out with that. And I'm excited to teach all of you mamas all about growing and building and scaling a successful YouTube channel and business for yourselves and to bless your families. Thank you so much for watching today's video and I'll see you real soon and talk with you in those comments below. Bye-bye.